It was all so simple. A couple of months ago, I was an Apple fanboy just waiting for September and the iPhone 15 to be launched. But suddenly, everything changed for me. Android walked into my life and showed me that things could be fun and individual. So which should I choose, iPhone or nothing? iPhone or nothing? You know what the answer is going to be. The Nothing 2 wins. I love this Nothing 2 phone. I was supposed to return it. it. It was just going to be a gimmick, but there's something I really, really find endearing about this phone. But then again, I'm an iPhone user. I've been an iPhone user for years and years and years. And I'm a kind of an Apple fanboy, I suppose, at heart. But there's something about this Nothing 2 that keeps pulling me back to it. And it's just got even better. Recently, there was a software update. It's now got the Point 2 OS on there. And we're going to take a full look at that in this video and also see how it's been behaving for me since I made my last video uh, about two or three weeks ago. This phone obviously is most recognizable and known for its glyphs. It kind of tells a story through light. The idea behind the glyphs, don't forget, is that they, nothing, wanted you to interact with your phone less. They wanted to be face down on your desk so that you've got less interference with your digital life and you just know when there's something essential that you need to look at on your phone. And in the latest point two update to the OS, they've actually given you another sound pack. That if you go into the Glyph Composer, which is an app you can download and put onto your Nothing 2, there's now the Swedish Mafia pack that you can put on there as well. So you can make even more individual sounds and ringtones and notifications to go onto your Nothing phone. And as Nothing grows and the phone becomes more and more popular, more companies are coming on board and supporting and partnering up with nothing as well. Just like Uber, for instance, with the uh, persistent indication light up there. Now, if you order an Uber, that persistent indicator light will give you a progress bar of how soon the Uber is going to arrive with you. And I'm sure that will just be the first of many companies that come on board with this young, exciting firm. And my other fun little feature I found when I was using the phone to record video the other day, it's not an update, it was there on the original OS with this phone, is it's a recording light on the back of the phone. So when you're recording video, you get a red light so that you know you're recording. Small, I know, but it's a nice, fun little detail, the kind of thing that makes this phone really individual. And that's where nothing have, I don't know, they kind of hit the spot with this phone. The four nanometer Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip on here is beautiful. I absolutely love it. It's great, it's fast, it's fluid, and it's the match certainly for my iPhone 14 Pro and the Google 7 Pixel Pro that I've been using recently. It's a great chipset and suits this handset perfectly. The battery life, there's a small buck coming, not a big one, but a small one. The battery life is great. Day-to-day -day average task, you'll easily get approaching two days out of it. I charged this this morning about 10 hours ago. And even with all the work I've been doing in making this video today, it's still got over 70% charge left on it. So the battery is great. And I also like the five watts of reverse charging that you get on it as well, which is super handy for things like AirPods if you're out during the day. But it's not the quickest of charges. As you can see, it took me roughly two hours to go from about 25% to 100% using the USB-C port on the phone straight into my Mac. So if you're using this regularly, you might want to think about getting yourself a 45 watt charging brick just to speed up your charging. But other than that, the battery and the processor, really good marks for me. This phone is running Android 13, of course, and probably, probably it's my favorite version on this phone compared to the other two Android phones that I've been using. There's no bloatware, no unnecessary gimmicks. It's just a stunning blend of innovation, design, and performance. It's all wrapped up, of course, in that signature nothing style. And it's the UI on this phone, of course, that makes it so much fun to use. For instance, the icon pack, when you download the nothing icon pack, you can individualize that as much as you want. You can have it very, very subtle and grayed out, or you can have it more colorful. You can label the apps up. Everything about it is just great. That's, I say, that's at the very heart of what makes this fun so good to use. When it comes to updates, nothing have uh, promised you're going to get three years of updates on the Nothing Phone 2 and four years of security patches every two months as well. And although it didn't come through on this update, the point two update, Nothing, who are clearly in this for the long run, they've got some plans to help tidy up the apps in your app drawer and the launcher, and they're going to be able to hide them away. I don't know how, but that's what they told us. They're going to be hiding the apps away in the launcher and your app drawer with a future update that's coming. As I say, they are thinking a long way ahead with this phone. This channel has seen some really good growth over the last month or so, I guess. And I just want to thank you for all of you that are taking time to subscribe. But interestingly, looking through the numbers, it turns out over 90% of you who are watching the channel aren't yet subscribed. So all I'd like to say is if you are enjoying the content I'm making on the iPhone, iPhone 15 is coming up, of course, on the Nothing phone that we're talking about this week, and on the Samsung Clip, everything we've been covering, the Galaxy, of course, make sure to subscribe. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And for those of you that have subscribed, only 12% have turned on notifications. So 
let's turn on those notifications turn it on so that you make sure that whenever I upload a video you are one of the first and I want you to know first because you're the guys that are enjoying this kind of content so thank you if you have subscribed if you haven't yet don't forget I'd really appreciate it. if you do it would really just help the channel out and eventually I'd like to get those numbers down to say around only I don't know 50% that watch the channel and aren't subscribed that'd be awesome but in the meantime just subscribe and also turn on those notifications the screen on here has kind of spoiled me. The 6.7 inch screen with really thin bezels seems to go on forever and ever. It's just a lovely screen to use. It's bright as well, 1600 nits of peak HDR brightness means that you can use it outdoors, no problem. And the when it drops down to the one hertz always on display, it doesn't seem to be affecting battery life. As I said, the battery life is great on here. So the fact you can have an always on display as well, they seem to have got that nailed. But the, it's just the sheer size of the screen on here that has spoiled me. Compared to my iPhone 14 Pro, which is a better display, clearly at that price point you'd expect it, the size on here, it just makes everything so easy to use. With an IP54 rating for splash, water and dust resistance, I think you can say this phone is going to last. The display, love it. Of course, most of the update, and certainly the important parts of this update, were all aimed towards the camera, which you'd expect. I'll be leaving a full list of all of the updates that came in point two in the description to the video. But if we talk about the camera, there were issues with some ghosting before, there were issues with stabilization, and they kind of worked on those really well. Low light effect in bokeh portrait shots, they seem to have worked on that. I checked out the stabilization. You do need the stabilization on, the action mode needs to be switched on, but then you don't get bad results from it. Certainly low light shots seems to be vastly improved, and there is way less ghosting now when you're using a 50 megapixel camera than it was before the update. And also, I was really surprised at how well it dealt with slow motion. It's actually, again, I think it's down to their engineering team, but that update, that point to update, if you haven't put it on yours yet, make sure you download it and install it. I haven't had any problems with it at all since I installed it, it was bug free, but it does seem to have ironed out a lot of the issues that were there with the camera before the update. So it's well worth installing. A couple of the other issues away from the camera that they've worked out on this update was the haptic motors, which still are ridiculously loud and strong. They're almost too much at times. They interfere too much with the use of the phone, particularly as this phone is supposed to interfere with your kind of digital life less. The strength of the haptic motors are probably still a little bit on the heavy side and interfere a little bit too much my liking. And a lot of people, and some people who've watched my videos actually commented on the fact they were having issues with the volume controls suddenly dropping out or suddenly just going quiet. Again, in this point to update, nothing is saying that they fix those issues as well. And just before we finish with the camera, move on to the audio. I know it's being a little bit greedy considering the price of the phone, but it'd be lovely if we got a telephoto lens on here. Maybe that will come on the next phone. Who knows, it'd be a great addition if they did get that telephoto lens on there because on the 50 megapixel lens, you only get a one time zoom and on the 12 megapixel, a two time zoom. So it is quite limited. And the telephoto lens would just kind of finish that array of lenses off really, really well. The phone deserves it to be honest with you. So keep them fingers crossed for nothing free. The audio still isn't great on this phone, sadly. There's no support for Dolby Atmos and the speakers, they're just not very good. Nothing in an update can really help that. The dual stereo layout, they've got the top and bottom speaker, kind of is what you come to expect on a phone of this price, but it just doesn't sound that good. Clearly, the iPhone is still way, way ahead, and the other phones I've been using recently beat the speakers on this phone. But if you're looking to buy this phone and you need some earbuds, I would suggest you buy the Nothing Sticks because when you buy those, you can then open up the app on the phone and there'll be an EQ and equalizer in there so you can get the sound a little bit better tailored to the sound that you want. So just bear that in mind if you're buying some earbuds to go with this phone. I think that would be the best route to go. As to what's next for Nothing, I mentioned a moment ago about the Nothing 3, and that isn't that far away. They've just gone through another round of fundraising. They've just managed to raise another $96 million for the company, and that's going into the offices. They've now got offices around the world. There's 450 staff involved 
with nothing. Let's just hope some of that staffing goes towards customer care because you know I had a couple of issues with that, as did you when I bought my phone a few weeks ago. But they're clearly in it for the long run. And also there's going to be another new company coming on alongside the main Nothing company. There's going to be a brand called CMF by Nothing and their first device, which I'm not sure when it's coming out. I think early next year is going to be a smartwatch. Clearly, Nothing are enjoying the game and they're going to be around for a while, which has got to be good news for us all, right? Picking up this phone again and starting using it, I realized why I enjoyed using it before when I made the other video. And I think it's partly known. It's a small company behind it. There's that kind of the minnows in the pool, the small fish in the big sea. They're biting at the big company's heels. And that's got to be good for us all, right? Because that's going to make the industry fresh. That's going to spur things on and make things better for us all. Across all devices, it can only be good. But you need somebody like nothing in the game to make that happen, because otherwise the big boys will begin to get a little bit stayed, a little bit safe, and a little bit boring. They need something like this in the mix just to, just to shake everything up. And I really like what Nothing have done. Yes, there have been issues with build quality, with customer care, and with the cameras. But you know what? Because they're a small company, they're able to react to that. And it shows in this point to update, they were listening. They've improved the 50 megapixel camera a lot. They've improved the slow-mo. They've improved the low-light bokeh. They clearly were listening to and have responded to the problems that we had when the phone came out. And that's got to be good. And that's because you're dealing with a smaller company. I love the fact that this phone has come from that smaller company rather than one of the big boys. It just feels more personal because of it. And I'm excited for what they can do to the industry moving forward. We need them. So let's just hope they can carry on making this phone better and better and better. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed just yet, now be a great time to do it. It seems small, I know, but it helps me out an awful lot. And if you enjoyed it, share, like, do all of that stuff and make sure, make sure to turn on those notifications. Thank you for watching this video about the Nothing 2. Let me know how you're finding your phone and I'll be back with you next week.